Right now, my focus is sideshow. This is like the least important thing for me right now. I'm gonna take my car to get it fixed by the mechanic because that's what he's good at. <laughs> Change tires, bro. Some things that you're just not meant to do. Him in boxes is one of them. I'm gonna show you that he's not gonna do anything. Look at this. Guys. Okay. We are at the official, official face-off between Dowd Savage and Warren the Mechanic Spencer. Now, this podcast is going to be a bit different. It's going to be a bit, you know, cutthroat. But, but what I want is, why do you believe that you're going to beat the other guy? Because, let's be honest, both of you are coming from a loss someone's O needs to go and definitely with all the aggression built in someone is getting knocked out right but I want to start with Daud Daud why do you think you are going to beat Warren Warren is experienced and why do you think you're going to beat him but before you answer that I want to have a origin story of how it all began it all began with uh, a dream, a dream to show people what I've got. This is definitely something very new for me. I was always like a influencer, entertaining people, right? But the world of boxing always inspired me. I love going for new things, right? Mm -hmm. And then some really amazing people like Brother Abed, Crypto Fight Night. I want to also thank my uh, opponent, Ben Williams. Mm -hmm. he's, the, he's the reason how I started it very good fighter i respect him very professional mashallah but yeah that was my first fight didn't go as planned because i wasn't prepared that was the only reason and he was very prepared he was very prepared yeah so that's uh, that's my story i love uh i love boxing after that i got knocked out by the way i shouldn't be saying this but yeah it was a good experience everybody should experience getting knocked out once Right. Which he will. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. So what makes me think that I'm going to win like from him, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, it's 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 actually very obvious from the beginning. He's He calls himself the mechanic. Okay. But I feel like he's a comedian instead. Okay. okay. He jokes a lot. In the last interview uh, with him, he was talking a lot. Mashallah. I like his confidence. And his jokes were funny. Do you know like the... All of the seats, all of the tickets got sold out. Do you know what's the reason? Who's the reason? Everybody loves comedy. And when people found out that he is going to be there, <laughs> it got sold out. <laughs> but doubt this is no stand-up comedy. It's mm -hmm. boxing. Yeah. And, and see? And I guess he, he's changed man now. Look at him. Color, hair color changed. So I believe, my point. I believe there's a new, new man coming in from both sides. Right? But... What's your game plan? Game plan is simple. Enter the ring. Look at him in the eyes. He's going to get scared. <laughs> Find him until he gets tired. And then go for that knockout punch. That's my, that's my game plan. Other than that, whether he loses or wins, this is a win-win situation for him. I'm bringing his face in the map. Nobody knows who he is right now. Do you know what? That, that I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. You know... Do you know what I mean? I, I, I respect the wood. I, I genuinely do respect him because mm -hmm. it takes balls to get in there, <laughs> especially with me. It takes balls. To, and it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what your background story is. If you get, if you stand between those, those ropes on fight night and the world is watching, it takes balls and respect. So I, I respect him for that. I mm -hmm. really do. Right. Warren, coming back to you now. It was funny. <laughs> no, but let's, let's, talk, let's talk about... Um, your origin right let's talk about why did you start and we look at your content um i would kind of disagree with doubt um your content you know shouts out that you know this guy's serious about boxing but why are you serious you don't need to do this right again both of you are not professional boxers you both of you do not need to do this uh do this why are you doing it and what made you start boxing? Free Tom G. That I could also agree with. I think me and Dad would have been going to get on by yeah. this, at the end of this conversation. Who knows? Unlikely, but who knows? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Boxing for me is just, it, it's a very simple, uh, so there's a simple way to put this. When I was younger, um, I by no means am black. I'm tanned. I have olive, beautiful skin. The wood knows how beautiful I am. He mentioned in the last interview, he said, you know, looks don't get, looks don't win your fights, but obviously that must be the way that he swings and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But boxing is, uh, it's a beautiful sport. And when I was in school, I, I got, I used to get bullied. You know, I used to get bullied and it was, it wasn't at a point where it was ruthless bullying, but a lot of comments were made, you know, around my skin color. So one day I actually just got, I got beat up one day. I went home, classic story, went to my dad. He said, what happened? I explained to him what happened. He said, right, okay, that's fine. Welcome to the garage. Here's a, here's a punch bag. I'm going to teach you how to box. Took me to the boxing gym and it just went from there. But this is, I'm talking like ages 12, 13, you know, I was only a young kid then. So I kind of lived life, built a business, and I'd sort of dipped in and out of boxing as, as the years went over. I had about seven fights. <laughs> and um, once I'd built a business which could sustain my, my lifestyle, my life, my family, everyone else, I thought, right, well, it's time to go and focus on me now. And then, you know, the, the world of boxing presented itself in a, in a far different fashion because I'm not fighting for money. I'm not fighting for, you know, for anything else than uh, than legacy and status. And that's why, you know, Dawood rightly said, we're presenting an opportunity here for each other mm. in the ring to go and uh, to go toe to toe. And what I love about the sport the most is it's, I've trained my hardest, he's trained his hardest. We get to stand in the pocket and say, who's the fucking better man? Let's go. Mm -hmm. Who's got it, you know? Right. So, Paul, what's your game plan for Dowd? Dowd really believes that he's going to win and not only win, but knock you out. What's your game plan for him? Right. If I was going to throw a surprise pie, right, mm -hmm. he's the kind of guy <laughs> that would spill the beans. He's a snake. He's the one that you wouldn't trust. Don't tell the wood the truth because he'll spill the beans, right? So that's the kind of guy that I'm dealing with. He's getting sparked. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. In any any way, shape, or form, if I see the shot, I'm going to take it. It's as simple as that. But how are you going to do it? Like, you know, in your past interviews, you have mentioned you're going to knock him out. He said he's going to knock you out. But how? What's the game plan? How are you going to do it? I'm going to send this hand flying through his skull. But look, man... Yeah. The game plan is, we, we all know that you can have a game plan and you're going to have to switch, you might have to switch it up. You need to have tools in your arsenal. You can you can try one thing, it might not work. You can bring out a different tool. With him, I think it's a one size fits all. It's going to go and bulldoze him. It's as simple as that. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to set the pace, I'm going to control the pace, I'm going to move around, I'm going to be elusive. And when I see the shot, I'm going to take it. Fair, fair. You mentioned you do respect Dawood. Mm. Right, but I don't see that online. Obviously, you call him sideshow, and you don't respect him enough online that you give him a fair chance where you see him eye to eye and say, mm. "Here's my opponent." You're um, undermining him. You're not looking at him as an opponent. You're looking at him as a sideshow. Yeah. Why is why is that so? Do, do you think you're cocky? I think. Uh cocky and confidence are often mistaken in life you know you can be a very very confident individual and be mistaken for being cocky because you know i can get in the ring and make big cocky movements and which i'm going to do anyway but i could also get in the ring and do what i did with aaron chalmers and just show absolute professionalism and how to be a warrior i've demonstrated that before you know i can take many forms so being confident is just part of my part of my success you know it translates through boxing business everything else in life you know that would very successful guy in youtube as well he does well for himself um but so it's it, it is what it is man and when you say that i don't respect him i actually do respect him i do he's going to get flatlined but he, but i respect him because you've got to if you're going to step in the ring with someone like that and, and go to war, you've got to respect him to a, you know, to, to a degree. And mm -hmm. like I said, it takes balls. It really does. But now, what about you? Um, do you respect him? Do you think what, you know, Warren is saying is true? Because, yes, he is kind of calling you out online, calling you a sideshow. But obviously, in person, he's telling you that he does respect you. 
So what do you think about it? Do you respect do you respect Warren? Yeah, I do respect him. And the reason for that is there's a saying, fake it till you make it, right? Okay. He follows it very, very strictly. <laughs> <laughs> so basically right now he is faking to be a boxer. First, secondly, he's faking to be famous. <laughs> Have you seen his likes? <laughs> I mean, I don't sometimes really... 15,000, sometimes 10,000, sometimes 1,000. How does that make sense? Doesn't make sense. Okay, let's let's put that aside. Now, his, I'm going to tell you about his game plan. He doesn't really have a game plan, but what he's trying to do is he wants all the exposure to himself by being funny. And he, he he's succeeding in that. He's actually funny. He doesn't know it, but he's really funny. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Uh, what was the question? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the gift was, uh, do you respect him? And, uh, you know, what do you think about him as a fighter, as a person? Yeah, I do respect him, bro. I mean, look at his ha ha hairstyle. Like, it's a very respectable hairstyle, mashallah. I think he got it today, right? No sarcasm here, no right? No sarcasm. <laughs> okay. Depends how you take it. All right. Depends who is it, who it's for. All right. Uh, so I do respect him. And uh, another reason for respecting him is, if you go to his profile... One of the pinned pictures is him with the top G. Once again, free top G. So yeah, that's that's the main reason I respect him. Okay, okay. Makes sense, right? Uh, guys, it's very important that, um, you know, you look at what's in hand. Mm -hmm. You guys are fighting um, in a few days. What's after this fight? Let's have two different scenarios, right? Let's have what happens if you win. And what happens if you lose? Let's start with Warren. Warren, what happens if you lose to this man? Let's have this possible. What are you going to do? Are you going to lead boxing? Because you are fighting, as well, what you said, a sideshow. But if mm. a sideshow knocks you out, do you think you should continue boxing? I'm going to be a realist here. And I'm going to take this angle because this is what I truly believe. I believe boxing is a dangerous sport and lives can be taken and they can be changed for the worst. And what I want after this is for me and Dadwood to go home safe to our families and to actually have a quality of life. Because to all the viewers at home that are watching this today, they'll they'll see it and they'll say, oh, it's fun, it's great, it's entertaining. They'll be sat at home excited with the snacks, you know, enjoying the fights. But the reality of it is, is your life can change. You can sustain injury, something, something bad can happen. And it's our jobs as fighters to defend ourselves correctly and also put on a fantastic show, you know? Mm. So after this is, a, this is said and done, I want us to go home, back to our families, be safe, enjoy, good, en enjoy a good quality of life. Because the truth is, that is at risk. And that, it's, you know, all you have to do is look at the history books. It happens. It can happen. You don't see footballers doing this, do you? You don't see footballers having freak accidents where they go home, they're left brain damage forever it doesn't it doesn't ever happen but boxing kickboxing anything to do with contact sports does so i want us to go in there have a good fight which we will we'll have a great fight enjoy ourselves put all our hard work on the line and come home safe that's it answer my question right what do you do if you do get knocked out get back up and uh do a backflip go again go again yeah i mean you look you saw exactly what happened in the last fight I was in. I got knocked down three times and I got back up four. You know, such is life. If you get knocked down again, look at DeWood, the man sat across the ring from me. He got sparked in the last fight. Here he is again, ready to go. <laughs> you see, I don't respect him. <laughs> the, guy's, the guy's fucking crackers. <laughs> He's a nutcase. Look at him. He's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you think I'm going to walk into a fight with this man and not have my guard up? <laughs> He's a fucking nut. He's a fruit loop. <laughs> so... It's always the same. If you get knocked down in life, you got to get back up, man, and just keep going. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very dangerous sport we're in. Anything can happen. To the viewers at home, anything can happen. You said this to me in the lift. You, you spoke to Floyd Mayweather and, said, Mayweather and said, look, you're 50 and 0. You're the best in the world. No one's ever beaten you. No one's ever come close to beating you. Mm -hmm. What happens if this guy connects? One With that one, one lucky punch is all it takes in a, in a split second. All of your training, everything you've ever done in your whole career, goes outside the window. Finished. Because you're only as good as your last fight, right? So you're absolutely right in what you say. 
I think we're we're going to go in there. We're going to have a great fight. We're going to be a very entertaining fight. It's 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 perfect for us. We've bo- we've both come off the back of a loss. We both need this, but it's not the end. You know, it's a win win for both of us, in my opinion. This isn't the end. We're both very entertaining. We're both here for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. He says I'm a pretend boxer, but you know, it's not going to be pretend when he gets in there on Friday night. <laughs> right now, same question for you, my man. Um, what if you lose again? What are you gonna do? Bro, winning on, winning or losing is a part of the game. Mm. Okay. Both of the things are respectful. You either win or you learn. So far, all of my games have been my matches have been against people who have more experience than me. True. Not only that, but they were also of a uh, much higher weight class than me. My last fight, it was ten kgs bigger than me. Mm. And he's like six foot one, I'm five foot nine. Right, mm. so you can see the difference. That's the first thing. So it takes balls, of course. There's, Foot, very, balls. there's a very interesting saying actually, and I'll, I'll just add to what Dewood said there. And it's if you, I, I love this analogy, and it's if you run with people that are faster than you, you might come last. But if you run with people that are slower than you, you might come first. Right, mm. but when you run with people that are faster than you, even though you come last, your time will be better. Because you're running faster to keep up with other people. Mm. But we're talking about boxing. That are faster than you, see? Mm. So it it works very well. And it's it's, it's a very good analogy that you can transfer to boxing. So, you know, I'll I'll teach you a few lessons along the way, brother. Don't don't worry about that. (laughs) A lot more wisdom where that come from. Okay, I I do respect you for what you said. Like, it's a dangerous sport and we have to be careful, right? That's that's there. So everybody, like, don't do this at home, whatever happens in the ring it's uh we're trained professionals not it's not it's not fake of course it's real because <laughs> this is boxing not wwe anyway coming back to the point so if i lose what am i gonna do yes firstly i don't know what i'm gonna do because I, I don't i haven't thought about that yet because i don't think i'm gonna lose i'm gonna win okay i'm gonna tell you what i'll do when i win when i win i'm gonna go home take a cold shower eat my favorite food Go to sleep, wake up, go back to the gym because I have so many other fights coming up. This is like a, this is like very, very, this is like the least important thing for me right now. There are way more important fights, by the way. Anyway, and then I'm going to take my car to get it fixed by the mechanic because that's what he's good at. <laughs> that's what he's good at. Change tires, bro. <laughs> go back to changing tires. All right, I think... I think we have a very, very different take from Daoud. I mean, not humble at all. And he's just coming for a throat. And I think this is the savage that you're going to see in the ring as well. Right. Uh, what happens if you win? If you knock him out, what's next for you? Well, I'm a shit, I'm a shit mechanic. That's why I'm a boxer. Because I can't fix cars. <laughs> well, so you do not have mechanic in your seat. You're going to have to go with somebody else. Look at my Instagram profile. It says ex-mechanic. <laughs> That's because I'm a shit mechanic. If I continue to fix cars, people would die. Because wheels would fall off. You know? So, I can't... <laughs> I'm probably... I'm, I'm higher risk as a mechanic than I am a fighter. <laughs> I was that bad, bro. Some people that used to work with me might disagree. But there's some things that you're just not meant to do. Him and boxing is one of them. <laughs> me and a mechanic is the other, you know? <laughs> so, back to the jokes again. <laughs> yeah. It's the truth. What's next for you? Do you have anyone in mind? Do you want to call out someone? You know, whoever's next for me, it's it's going to be a lucky a, a lucky day for them. I, I, I'm now in a position, Dawood says that I'm fake famous, but I'm also in a position where whoever fights me next... Gain, it makes a gain. They gain something from it, whether it's more status, whether it's more clout, whether it, whether they make new connections, whatever it is. When, so when people meet me, if they're going to fight me or not fight me or just know me, they have an increase in value in their life because that's who I am. I'm a very resourceful man in boxing and in business. So wherever I go next is up to me because I'm the man and I put on the show when I sell the tickets. What did the Wood say at the start of this? He said... He sells tickets, and I do. So, there's a few names that have been floating around the hat. There was some some bum called I, I don't even know his name, Joe Joe Joel, something like that. Some bum, uh, some TV bum, and then you got Jack Fincham, Jack the Hot Dog Fincham. He's getting it at some point this year. Um, but yeah, my, right now my focus is sideshow, and mm-hmm. bro, it's a few days away. So, I'm looking forward to it, man. 
Mm-hmm. When days are getting closer, I mean, the more it gets close, the more intense it gets. Obviously, like, like I said, both of you are coming from a loss. It really, really means something to you to just go out there and knock out, clean the other person, right? Mm-hmm. But guys, let's talk. I mean, we have been talking p- about boxing for the past few minutes now. Let's talk about the venue, the mm-hmm. place. We are in Dubai, right? Uh, your past few fights were in Dubai. What do you think about Dubai? Let's start with someone who is a foreigner, um, who's not from around here. What do you think about Dubai? What do you think about fights coming in Dubai? Well, I'm fighting him in his back garden, aren't I? Hmm. Really? You are? I'm, I'm coming over here to his territory. I'm going into his back garden. I'm going to punch his lights out. But... He thinks I'm going to hit him with a, with a headshot as well. I'm going to sink. I'm going to sink a left hook into his body. I mean, if it's there and I hit him with the right hook, the right hook, and his head spins around three times, fine. You know, mm-hmm. I'll take the shot. But I'm going to hit him with a body shot. I think that'll be a nice one for him. I'm ready to deliver. All right, all right. But but the question was, what do you think about Dubai and uh, you know fights coming to Dubai? I think Sideshow's got a big back garden. That's what I think. I think it's a fantastic place. It's it's the land of opportunity. Hmm call him Sideshow Bob, but he's living in the right place. Mm-hmm. You know, the UK is uh, is on the uh, on the way down. It's not a very good place to live right now. And I'll just be honest, I, I, I love living there. And I love the opportunities that it presents. You know, it's it's uh, it's a nice place. I love walking my dog in the uh, in the cold out the back in the uh, in the fields and the in the wind and the nature. But here is monumentally successful. It's a winning nation. The, the whole city is on the up. Everything about it is fantastic. You know, from speeding fines to whatever else it is, parking tickets, anything else, anything that's stressful in the UK, here is a pleasure. There's no tax. If you, if you, want, to, if you want to tax a nation 40% and expect them to not be angry, it's, it's delusional, isn't it? But here, I'd rather, fine, fine, zero tax, cool, make everything expensive, fine. That's, that's on me, because I'm the one making the purchase. There were just everything that this uh, city has to offer, I think, is brilliant. I want to. I also want to shout out Crypto Fight Night as well because CFN have put on. You know, this is going to be the fourth, the fourth show now, and the last one was a spectacle. This one is the biggest show to date. It's completely sold out. It, mm. they, they've broke records in La Pearl Arena. It's it's going to be a spectacle, and mm. we're going to throw some mad shapes in there. And I can't wait for it. But this, this, uh, th- this whole city, the whole nation, the UAE. Is a blessing, man. I'm just I'm grateful to be here. See, sure. right. Um, My take on this, of course, I agree with him completely. I grew up here. I came here in the year 2004. It was it, the city. I grew with the city, right? There was uh, very little, very few things here. But subhanAllah, the amount of pace, the amount of speed that this country is growing is very, very um, s- s- not surprising, but like very astonishing. Okay, mashallah, Allah mabarak. And I've been living here for a long time. I know the people here. They're very down to earth. They're very hospitable and they're very humble, very respectful. The safety that you get in this country is unmatched. You can't find it anywhere. You can go out at 3 a.m. You can go out at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. You won't you won't feel like you're not safe, you know? Mm-hmm. So we. Uh, I want to thank, firstly, Allah. Secondly, the leaders of this country. They're doing an amazing work. Their visions are amazing. And we're, we're actually very grateful to be here. May Allah not separate us from this land. And if you see my bio on Instagram, it says, I love UAE. And I truly do. I truly do. The people, the land, the country, the leader... The amount of nationalities that live in UAE is insane. They trust the leadership. That's that's what makes me really happy. Mm-hmm. And Daud, you are representing all of these people. That's where I want to conclude it. Mm-hmm. You think so highly of you know the nation, the leaders, and mm-hmm. you are representing mm-hmm. this country uh, at fight night. So good luck to you. Thank good you. luck to you, Warren, as well. Thank you. I'll take the final question. Mm-hmm. Right before, before you get there, I just want to say, inshallah, of course, I'm looking forward to win, but this is I'm going to say this honestly. If, if by any bad luck, I don't win, I just want to put it out there 
that uh, the country, I love the country, I love the people, but I would, it would be the worst thing for me to let the country down, right? It would be the worst, worst feeling. So I just want to put it out there. I'm going to try my best, but in the end of the day, everything is in the hand of God. Hmm. Right. Guys, we are at the end of the show. Warren, a lot of talk has been done, right? Uh, we are a few days away from fight night. Your final words, I want you to remove your glasses and look at him. The same way you're going to look at him when you are in the ring in a few days and tell him your final prediction. I don't want to do that. He might turn to stone. If I take, <laughs> if I, if I take these glasses off, he might turn to stone. All right. This what are your final prediction? My final prediction of the fight is this. I'm going to march forward. I'm going to set the pace. I'm going to be elusive. And I'm going to take you out of the body shot. That's what I'm going to do. What round? I might take you into the second. I'll give him a warm up. I'll, I'll, I'll let him warm up in the first. In the second, I'll find the shot and put him away. So you're not going to do anything, bro. That was your match prediction. You look at him. What do you think about him? Everything, the talk has been done now. What's the match prediction and what round are you going to knock him out? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you that he's not going to do anything. Look Wait. at this. Guys. Okay.